Education Committee, uh, June 19th, 2018, Committee Room 3. Um, we do not have a quorum. Uh, we have one resolution before us, RS 2018-1262 by Vircher and Poli appropriates to certain accounts for the yeah. benefit of the Metro National Public Schools $3,500,000. Can we move the bill and discuss it? Is yeah. that okay? Motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. You guys want to explain what it is? Sure, I'd be glad to. And some of you may have heard this uh, yesterday at the Budget Committee meeting, but I'll just take these in order. Um, the first one is related to our uh, statutory required transfer to the charter school fund. Uh, this is strictly a calculation. It's a per pupil calculation of the total state and local revenue per student. And when we did our, put together our estimates in February of 2017, uh, we were still projecting an increase in student enrollment as we had uh, had for the last 15 years. And as you probably already know, uh, we didn't have an increase in our student enrollment. We had a slight decrease. And so what that did was that reduced the uh, student enrollment part of the calculation, which is the denominator of the, of the calculation, which increased the per pupil amount uh, that is required by state law to be transferred to our charter schools. So this is not uh, a, a result of charter enrollment being over what we thought it would be. It's strictly a calculation uh, that's required by state law of the per pupil amount that the school district is required to transfer to the charter school fund and then that per pupil amount is then distributed to our charter schools based upon their enrollment. And so that's the reason for the $1.24 million increase to our charter school fund strictly based upon the, the increase in the per pupil amount by the state required uh, calculation. The second one, fringe benefits, uh, we have uh, been digging into this and what we have found is we have more participating, more of our employees participating in our insurance plans than we have had in prior years. We believe it's related to the Affordable Care Act requirement that all individuals have insurance or they will be, there will be a penalty assessed to them on their income tax return. And we, what we're seeing is both for teachers as well as for our support employees, we have more participants than we've had in the past and therefore the uh, amount that we had budgeted for fringe benefits was not enough to cover what we believe we're going to need to pay out before the year is closed out to the tune of approximately 1.3 million. The last one is the MDHA property tax increment. This is an amount that's provided to us by Metro Finance. We don't have any say in what that estimate is. It's strictly a number that Metro Finance sends us to budget. And so we budgeted that amount, and the amount that they actually uh, deducted from our accounts was almost a million dollars more than what they told us to budget. Uh, and so we're not involved in how that's calculated, so we would need Metro Finance to explain you know, why that occurred. I've not received a real good explanation myself, other than it was just more than what they initially estimated. And so that's about a million dollar increase for that MDHA property tax increment or property tax refund account. Uh, altogether, this totals $3.5 million. It's more of a precautionary. Uh, we won't close our books out until probably sometime in August. And so we feel like we're close enough to the total allocation that the council has uh, authorized us to spend that we want to be sure to go ahead working with Metro Finance, go ahead and, and seek this supplemental. 3.5 million represents 0.4% of our total budget. Uh, and so we knew that we were tracking very, very close to what uh, our allocation, total allocation was. And so we are requesting this supplemental uh, to be sure we stay within whatever has been authorized by the council. Thank you. Anybody have any questions that weren't answered? We didn't have any DHA at the meeting, so we really weren't able to get much more than, uh, than you told us regarding the last item. Uh, just to clarify, this is uh, this will be coming out of funds from this year's budget, not uh, yeah, next year. Correct. Thank you. Yes, this is fiscal year 17-18, current year budget, and this since this is the last council meeting of the fiscal year, uh, our understanding is if we're going to request a supplemental, even though we don't know exactly what that might be by the time we close out our books, this is the last opportunity we have to do that. Anybody have any concerns? Right. So you know why the decrease in students, enrollment. the decrease in the enrollment, 
Do you know? Do we know why? Why? We think a lot of it has to do with gentrification. Uh, we feel like that uh, there's a lot of uh, our families that have moved out, been forced to move out, and been replaced by millennials that don't have children or have children that are not young enough to go to school. Uh, we believe that's a part of it. We also believe that the political rhetoric out of Washington uh, has uh, had an effect on some of our immigrant families and, and those students. But it's very difficult to know exactly why uh, we've had the decline. It's an anomaly, we're hoping. Um, it's an anomaly, we're hoping, because we have increased in enrollment for the last 15 years, and this is the first year in those 15 years we've actually seen a decline, even though it was a fairly, it was a small decline in relation to the total enrollment that we have. Uh, but we're hoping that it's an anomaly. Next year, we're looking at flat enrollment. Uh, basically an increase of around 300 students is what we're projecting so that we consider that flat since we have educate almost 86,000 students. Um, but that's the reason that we, uh, and, and Mark, I don't know, I know you've done some research on it as well. That's the reason that we believe uh, that we've seen that decline. So it's not um, concentrated in any particular area, the decrease? I mean, I know that there may be some decrease in North Nashville considering the change in the demographics in that area now. But I would expect that the South East portion would have increased as a result of that. So thinking it Southeast out. continues to grow. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's that is South and Southeast. Right, right. South and right. <laughs> I would echo as I am on my way out the door. Uh, to put that in context, though, we are in good shape uh, in comparing ourselves to comparable population cities throughout the country right. as a percentage of uh, uh, the population enrolled in public schools. It looks like we are greater in many cases than a lot of the cities in our comparable numbers. Is that not right? Yes. Okay. We have been an anomaly well, of time. I to well, I agree with the hospitals as well. Thank you. We'll adjourn. Thanks, Rose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the... Thank you. Thank you.